Central Texas Life with Ann Harder. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Do you know this is National Gardening Day? And it's because we're focusing on that topic here on the podcast, but it, we're actually taping this on April 14th, and it is National Gardening Day. So welcome to, uh, to the podcast. I have uh, Della Stetzer here with us who is the chairman of the plant sale for the McLennan County Master Gardeners. Yes. Now, I had some of your compadres on last year. We were talking about the Master Gardener program. Mm -hmm. And um, how long have you been a Master Gardener, Della? Since 2008. All right. So what has, what has that meant to you, to have that added level of oh, expertise when it comes to gardening? It, it's amazing. The knowledge that you get and the fellowship. It, it, it's just, it, it's an amazing organization. A lot of friendships formed, and and I, I learned that you don't have to know everything. <laughs> well. It, it's impossible. you got a wealth of people to ask questions. Yes, we do. Then we have a wealth of knowledge in that group. Um, started in, I think, 97. Mm -hmm. and, and we have still three members that were members in 97. Oh, so really? We have a couple really good go-to people. <laughs> If you got a question, that's who you ask. Yes. Well, one of the big things that you do every year is the plant sale. Yes. And uh, I was there last year. I know you have to get there bright and early. <laughs> and we were trying to be such good soldiers. We were sitting in the car waiting and then oh, no. turned around and looked. And folks were, I went, wait a minute. And so we jump out of the car and we get, because like that, the plants Quick. are gone. Well, um, we, we had a couple setbacks because, um, in, you know, we all had to deal with COVID. Well, yeah. And so our last sale at Westview Village was in 2019. And then COVID kind of shut us down. And then last year, we were kind of on the edge. It was like things Are were we starting have it or, yeah, to open right, up, right. but not really. And so in two weeks, we threw together one over at the extension office. And uh, that mm -hmm. one went really fast. Yeah. So well, I got a fire spike, and oh. I don't know who grew it, but uh, it's still it's doing great. We've, in fact, we've uh, done a cutting off of it, and I've got one in the ground and the original one in the pot. Um, anyway, and I'll have they to They do ask well. You, they, they'll do well in the ground? They, they do. Mine come back okay. every year. Okay, well, that's good to know because, you know, the pots I can put into a little greenhouse. but And the good thing about fire spikes, they're a fall bloomer. Mm-hmm. And that's always fun because and the right hummer is loving, and that's very it's a bright red flower. Yes. And so, yeah, let's talk a little bit about how important it is for us, no matter what we're growing, uh, whether you know folks focus on vegetables, and you know we've got inflation is kind of eating into our yeah. wallets. And I, I know we're growing more vegetables this year, just to see see if we can. I mean, we're still kind of be beginners at all this. Um, but also the flowers, and but all of it, it's so important that our pollinators have something yes. to go to. Yes. Uh, um, there's quite a few quite a few plants. A lot of people say, I can't grow anything in Texas. <laughs> well, it's because they try to grow the wrong things. But there's a lot of natives that do extremely well here and attract the butterflies and the hummingbirds and the bees and... Um, it, there, there's a ton of plants out there. You just kind of have to plant the right things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, having having those bees uh, healthy because we've been yes. hearing so much about bee colonies dying off, and and we will not have food <laughs> if we that's lose true. the bees. That, that that's one thing that I did learn that, that civilization will cease to exist without the bees, which is kind of fascinating that you've got this little bitty bee. How important that. It we is. can't survive without them. So yeah, have you ever kept bees? Have you ever gotten? To I that? have. I have not. Yeah, I have not. Um, I I um, I do do pollinators. Mm -hmm. I, I love the hummingbirds and and the butterflies and um, and and one thing uh, with the the monarchs, you know, they they have their host plants and their nectar plants and passion vine is one of their host plants and they will strip it down to nothing there won't even be a leaf yeah left. and you have to be okay with that yes because so, it doesn't look so good but right but 
it, the end result the is end worth result it. The end result is a beautiful and, butterfly. And I do. I plant a lot of things just for that. I plant fennel. Uh, yes. And I, I plant pipe vine for the uh, swallowtail, pipe and vine dill. swallowtail. And I have a hard time growing dill. I don't know why. I don't know if. And um, uh, But I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, and, and different butterflies. Native milkweed. Um, tropical milkweed is not so good. Um, people really? People grow it, but we yeah, Because we really, that's what I am primarily have is the tropical. We need yeah, native. Yeah, I've noticed I don't have a lot of uh, butterfly larvae on it, but they will come like crazy, you know, late in the yeah. season to it. Aphids love it, too. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just learned about all this kind of stuff. Okay, well, let's talk about those plants. Uh, maybe are there any things that you have tried over the years that you're like, just doesn't work here because I've spent a lot of money on peonies and I'm trying no. to grow peonies in pots. No, my son not going to work. No, my son lives in Oregon. Oh, I know. And he They're sends me a picture fabulous. like yeah. this, and he's like, "What is this?" And I, <laughs> I sent, I sent the picture out there to Sandra out at Bonnie's nursery. Yeah. And I said, "What is, is this? A peony?" And she goes, "Oh, that didn't come from around here. That's not from around these parts." <laughs> so yeah, no, well. it's too too hot. Well, and I did order heat tolerant, so we're going to see well, how, one, how at, heat tolerant they are. At, at, they're not tolerant to Texas heat. Yeah. At, you know, a, a lot of plants will say full sun, but they don't mean Texas yeah. full sun. At, you know, at, and I tell everybody, you know, we need a break in the afternoon from that hot sun. Our plants do too. Yeah. So m- the majority of plants that say full sun will do well with some afternoon shade. Okay, well, you've helped me already. <laughs> I know where I'm going to be moving some, well, my husband's going to be moving some yeah. pots. <laughs> oh, yeah, but, you know, it is one of those things. If you, if, if you say, you know, I really don't see a lot of peonies around Central Texas, there's a reason. There's a reason. <laughs> well, there are some wonderful Texas superstars Let's talk yes. a little bit about that, what that whole genre of plants is. Okay, there, there, there's actually a booklet, and we hope to have them at the plant sale. Mm-hmm. It's a booklet that's put out by um, Texas a- AgriLife Extension Office, and it's plants that they have tested for years, and they're, they're grown t- for many areas in, in Texas. So, you know... It, They'll survive in many, many different areas. And, um, yeah, because Texas has got so many different regions uh, just itself. Just from, you know, here to Austin. Yeah, or then up to a, Dallas. I mean, you're yes, going to have a, a huge, huge difference. But they're, they study them and they're, you know, they, they profess that they grow well and they, they do well here. Mm-hmm. And, and actually, I brought three plants. So tell and me what two you of brought. them are superstars. Okay, good. That, and that wasn't on purpose. So <laughs> this one here on the end, this tall one, is a thryalis. And it's a, a little tiny yellow flower. Uh, mine has come back oh, several years now. It survived Snowmageddon. All right. I'm thinking anything that survived that it's 2020, gonna be, it, it, it's, it's a gonna keeper. Okay. It's, it's going to be okay. It's going to do, yeah. And it, it gets maybe about oh, four to five feet something like that. Um, I have it out in the full sun. Mm -hmm. It might get a little afternoon shade, but um, the pollinators love it. And it's just bright and cheery. And how big big is it going to get? About maybe five feet. Okay. So it's wide. I mean, and it's it's kind of a shrubby. Okay. So you can trim it up and shape it if you, if you want to, but, Mm -hmm. and, and it's a long time. I like long time bloomers. I don't, care for the one and done right and and this will start blooming here probably any time now uh-huh. and it'll go all the way to a freeze very good so okay it, that is a keeper. brand new one it's and it's a superstar mm-hmm. now is this like something you would if you were going to do a zero scape or just not do a lot of irrigation or i know some people are trying to to, to yeah, do that just do more not dry, use any um, water or well, I have I mean, it we've in a got bed a, that has sprinklers, so I, I don't know how drought say, tolerant it is. That's what I'm but, saying. We we have sprinklers, that, and some things really like to be a little drier than others. They do, so. and, and that's another thing you have to think of when you're planting. Yeah. 
you know, the drought tolerant it doesn't mean that they don't need water ever. <laughs> they need some water. They need a drink. That would be called a cactus, a maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And um, and then the one in the middle, the little shorter one, that's a duranta, also known as a sky flower. It is also a superstar, mm-hmm. and that can get up to twelve feet or so. Really? And it you can train it into a uh, leave it as a shrub. Mm-hmm maybe six feet wide it, it can get very very large and it also um you can trim it to a tree and when you trim it the the uh, trunk up and then just let it and it cascades and it down it, it kind of it weeps it weeps really? and even as a shrub it will it will weep uh-huh. and uh, Duranta, Duranta. Is the name of that. I've never pollinators seen that. absolutely love it good and trained as a tree from a distance it will look like a wisteria because of wow. the way it, it and does cascades it bloom down. long period of- long time bloomer it'll really? bloom spring to spring to frost yeah, another superstar mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it, it's a good one good one for pollen good good all around and it just does well mm-hmm. the and one on the end got some bloom on it yeah and and yeah it's kind of a purpley blue they have another one, um, Golden Dew, I think, and and it's more of a um, limey green leaf. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's it's a lot lighter leaf color. Yeah, because a lot of people want a variety in the green, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That a lot they, of texture, that they see. And, mm-hmm. and so. Yeah. And the one on the end that's actually blooming is a Mexican honeysuckle. It is not a vine. Okay, good because. You know, I grew up with honeysuckle, and I loved it. I loved the smell of it, but mm -mm, Mm -mm. I don't want that vine. This one is a shrub, and it gets about, oh, maybe three feet or so. Uh I've had it in the garden. I always called it a hummingbird bush. I got a start from my mother's neighbor, oh, probably... Oh, 15 years or more ago, Mm -hmm. and that's what she called it. And I didn't know any better until I became a master gardener. (laughs) And I started propagating it, and that's when I found out the correct name is a Mexican honeysuckle. So how hard is that to propagate, and is that one that you started? It's one that I propagated. Mm -hmm. All of I propagated all of these. And um, the Mexican honeysuckle is one, and the Duranta, actually, well, this is a little bit harder, but these two here And they were are, just cuttings. You did cuttings? They were cuttings. They were cuttings that I took, and this one was in a, a greenhouse over the wintertime and loved it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. It, it'll stay kind of shrubby. It, it will multiply, but not... How does it, with runners coming um, up, or how does it It'll multiply? just, like, pop up here or there, but it's not what I call invasive, because I don't do invasive. Okay, yeah, let's but talk about 15 that. 15 years... Yeah, fifteen years. It's been in a in a small area. Okay, so it it has stayed contained. It, it, it stayed very it's, contained. It's not a bully. <laughs> no, no, definitely not a bully. Not like obedient plant. He that that one's a bully. Okay, that, I know now. I'm not sure. I know you, what you don't want. I don't obedient, want that. Don't I know. Want, I, it's not obedient. I don't want bamboo. I mean, oh, no, there's several no. things that I yeah. that I know I don't want. Um, I did plant Katie Ruella that I have heard. You don't. Really you don't want. <laughs> Oh, what that? The dwarf, right? The dwarf. Well, some of them as... start out low, and then the well, big there's ones... two two varieties. Well, I guess I have both varieties from what I was gifted. Yes, there's a tall one, I have and tall when one. it goes to seed, it will sound it like an explosion. It pop, 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 pop. Really? And the seeds spew everywhere. Now I have not. I'll have to check that yes, out. But they spew everywhere. We're we're pretty good about digging it out. We are trying to keep it. The shorter one, the fence. dwarf, is mm-hmm. is a much, much, lot easier. It's more of a ground cover almost. Yeah, and really. it's much easier to maintain. Yeah, and I always thought those are those are pretty because it almost looks like someone took a hot glue gun and just glued yeah. the flower the in the flower. middle of this, yeah. this green puff. Well, we're going to take a short break. But okay. when we come back, I want to hear more about the plants and about the plant sale because you're going to want to mark your calendar for that. May 7th. You heard it first. May 7th. We'll be right back. And 
we're back with uh, Della, who is chairwoman of the plant sale for the McLennan County Master Gardeners. And this is going to be held where? Are you going to? This have- will be at Westview Village and on Valley Mills Drive. It's 551 Valley Mills Drive. And it, we will be in the Center Mall area. Okay, and it's this is May 7th, which is May a 7th, Saturday. A Saturday. Um, what eight, time? 8. We'll open at 8. Okay, and you better be there out. earlier than that if you want a good <laughs> selection. But So how many master gardeners are taking part in growing and providing these plants? That's a good question. I'm we, glad we I had our meet, We had our <laughs> meeting yesterday, and um, there's a lot of them that are growing, but they don't tell me. So I'm usually surprised on Friday when we actually deliver the plants over yeah. there. And, and it's a happy surprise because, you know, some people will say, oh, I don't think my plants look good enough or, you know, they're not big enough. And then some just surprise me and bring a whole truckload of plants. So. Well, I mean, I'll buy a start if I know, you know, and, it's and that's a quality what I've plant. Told, you know, we, we actually are, are one of the things we're very, very proud of is as far as I know, we are the only county that grows all of our plants. We do not purchase wholesale. Oh. We grow everything. Well, I can imagine in some places they just want to beef it up with more Yes, stock, and, and a know. lot of color, you know, and, and we, uh, we just propagate from each other's gardens and friends' gardens and family gardens and where, wherever we can propagate, but only plants that are not patented we we get a lot of questions why don't you have this why don't you have that we are not it is illegal to propagate a patented oh my plant. goodness kind of like you have a patent on i can't think of anything right now but well what would be a, a roses roses there are several roses that are uh, knockout rose is a good one knockout rose is patented and is it is illegal to propagate them I did not know that. And we're also so. Not, how do you? How would you find out if what you um, have is patented? It, when you get the little tag in your plant, mm-hmm. in little teeny tiny tiny letters, it might say like PPA or something like that with a little number. And mm-hmm. some of them, it's actually on the tag in bold. It is illegal to propagate this plant in any well, I guess, way I guess or I form. Haven't I haven't bought many of those because I'm I don't recall. Ever so that's one reason that. we don't have certain bra- knockout roses being one. We we don't have. Knockout I'm not a roses. fan of knockout roses. Um, Is that weird? I mean, I just no. Well, frankly, because when we moved to our our home two years ago, Rose Rosette had said there were original knockouts that were big plant. Yes. So they had to be dug out and disposed of, and I've got irises in that bed. Now, yes. I, mean, I don't have. I'll never put a rose, rose in there. Rose rosette um, is very prominent in knockout roses, yeah. and it it's it's actually a mite, and it travels airborne. Yeah, and once it starts traveling through, it can wipe out an entire neighborhood. Yeah, you might want to tell everybody what do you look for if you think you um, might have rose. Well, rosette. I have a picture, but it didn't print out very well. So the best thing to do is to go to roserosette.org. Oh, really? And it's, it's got its own It has <laughs> its, it, it's that, that Well, it's bad. horrible. It's, it's that it's horrible. horrible. Yeah. And um, what the main thing I look for is the, the stem. It looks like it's kind of swollen. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it, a, it gets really red, and there will be millions and junior. millions of thorns. Thorn, that's that, and that's and what even all on my a normal knockouts. thorny rose, you know, you'll have a thorn here, a thorn right, here. Right. But this, the like the whole stalk mm-hmm. will be nothing but thorns, and it kind of looks like swollen red. And then at the end, which is often, it's called a witch's broom, and it's kind of a burgundy, burgundy colored leaf. But right. That's also new growth. Yes. So you have to have kind of have the other symptoms along with it yeah. because a lot of people in the spring think they've, mistake they've the, got it. the new growth for it. And no, I, I look for the all the yes multiple thorns on the dig stand. it it's out just not good. and dispose of it <laughs> in the it trash, away. not mm-hmm. in your garden refuse in in the trash. Put it in a black plastic bag. Put it in the trash can and. You can never plant another rose in that spot. Right. And there is no cure, 
right. A&M has done extensive research. And roserosette.org will sh- have pictures of all the symptoms. Mm-hmm. Um, you can even ask questions. And then A&M, you can actually send a sample of your, uh, take a cutting and mm-hmm. send it in for them I mean, to analyze because they've done okay. extensive, extensive yeah. studies on it. Well, I had the opportunity to go to the Antique Rose Emporium and do a story for Traveling Texas. And I could have spent all day there. All day. But we had, we were on a time schedule and had to go to Bluebell oh, <laughs> down yeah. there yeah. in Brenham. So uh, I didn't get to spend as long as I wanted. But I lo- I fell in love with the Antique Roses. Yes. And the whole story behind Antique Rose propagation and how you, you can go and find an old abandoned almost Texas... Uh, cemetery or cemetery Mm -hmm. and you'll see these roses that nobody's tending them and fussing over them and doing all this stuff and they're just doing great and they have wonderful fragrance that's the main thing uh, that you know a lot of beautiful roses are just that they're beautiful but they have no fragrance a lot of the newer roses the and and those are the ones actually that seem to be getting the rose rosette yeah the cultivators, because, mm-hmm. you know, they, they've they taken one of those old rambling red roses from the cemetery and then um, grafted it into this rose here to make a really pretty rose, mm-hmm. and it might be absolutely gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And but have a good fragrance. St- <laughs> the fragrance starts going away Yeah. after, you know, they cultivate this, and then mm-hmm. they mix that with this, and... Um, it, it's a lot of the cultivators that get the, the disease, so if... I would say that if you had grandma's roses from way back and you haven't introduced some of the new cultivators, you might be safe. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't guarantee it, but you'd be safer than somebody that planted a big spread of knockout roses. Right. Right. Um, So we've, we've talked about invasive. One thing you, you, you mentioned that, that it's, it's, it's not politically correct to call it invasive, <laughs> invasive species anymore, if, <laughs> depending if, on if the plant. If it is a native to Texas, it's considered aggressive, <laughs> not invasive. Or we can call it a bully, though. We can call it a bully. <laughs> we can call it a bully. Um, so we, when did you really get into gardening? and, and uh, When I moved this, to Texas. Oh, really? Where were you from originally? California. Well, now that there's some beautiful stuff grown in California. Yes, year-round bougainvilleas. Oh, yeah. That reach to your rooftops. Just you know. breathtaking, solid yes. pink or So whatever. Texas was a whole new experience, yeah. and um, I, I started out in, in another garden club, in McGregor Garden Club, and then there was an ad in the paper for Master Gardeners, and and then one thing just led to another, and then I got involved in the plant sale, and I've been doing plant sale since 2017, I think. Wow. Yeah. Well, and I know people look forward to it and are really, really uh, happy. I'm with it's think, a happy with the, gardeners with are happy plant, people. Well, they are, and you know, and we have gone through COVID, and we've gone through. Uh, you know shutdowns and all that but still our gardens were there and and what that does for the gardener um psychologically yes. you know besides just the health aspect of getting out in the fresh air working bending yes. stooping you know doing the things you have to do i have a baseball cap that said gardening is cheaper than therapy <laughs> And, and COVID did, I mean, one good thing that it did was create a lot of gardeners. I think it did. On the downside, for those of us that have been gardening, plants are fewer and far between now because and, we have so many new gardeners. And, but it's you know, plant, plant stock is expensive, too. Very Well, I'm glad you said that, too, because we took a vote and we decided that everything has just gotten so outrageous and so expensive and we are keeping our prices the same as they were in 2018, I believe. We have not really? raised our, our prices. So we'll That's have, great. hopefully, an abundance of plants. Mm-hmm. Very, very reasonable. Very reasonable. And, and a variety because, you know. Well, I mean, honestly, I'm not familiar at all with, with what you've brought today. So, and that they're, that they're Texas superstars yes. makes it. Even better. Even better. We we noticed that the public wasn't 
as aware of the Texas superstars. Mm -hmm. And because we're in a confined area, come rain or shine, because it's covered and it's in the shade. Right, so it's going to happen no matter what it on the It will seven. happen yeah. no matter what. And there's a breeze that blows through there. So it, it's not oh, yeah. it's be, not uncomfortable at all. Nice. It's a pleasant shopping experience. <laughs> but um, we, we, we have a, a large variety and, and it's just kind of fun to talk to everybody. And we, because of space limitations, we eliminated the superstar section and put in a native section because people Good. were more more familiar With or wanted term. to know more about mm -hmm. natives. Mm -hmm. And then we, because you, you can have a plant that's a perennial. We have a perennial section. Mm -hmm. It could also be a pollinator. It could also be a superstar. And it could also be a native. So we thought native, people understand native more. Mm -hmm. So we, we uh, put the native section in and it is done very, very well. Well, you should be expecting a crowd, I know. A very large crowd. <laughs> there at uh, Westview Village then on uh, May 7th. May 7th. Bright and early, 8 o'clock. Uh, appreciate you spending some time. I like to end these little visits so with a little questionnaire. It's similar to oh. the one the great, the late great James Lipton would use on his show, Inside the Actor's Studio. I don't know if you even remember that show or not, but this is my sort of take on what he asked. He would say, what is your favorite word? Happy. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a least favorite word? Negativity. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hear that a lot. What turns you on creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? Gardening. <laughs> Surprise, surprise, surprise. What what turns you off then spiritually or emotionally? You could have warned me. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the point. Uh, I, I Negative people. Yeah. 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 What sound do you love the most? Rain. Oh, isn't that the truth? Sound of rain. Oh, I love the sound of rain. Yeah. Yeah. We had some. I don't like hearing hail. <laughs> no, no, just just a nice rain. Nice rain. What is your least favorite sound? Chalkboard. Nail, nail, oh, oh chalkboard. yeah. Oh, yeah, let's, all right. Yeah, well, let's not go there. What profession would you have liked to have tried? I didn't even ask you what you, if you worked or <laughs> did it. I did. I, I was in uh, contracts in, in aerospace industry. Oh, my goodness. And um, I, I don't. There's so many things I enjoy. Right now, it's gardening. Yeah. And 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 I'm enjoying that thoroughly. So yeah. I don't know what else I, I would have done. Mm -hmm. Was there anything you know you would not want to do? A nurse. <laughs> you didn't even have to think about don't that. Don't do needles. I don't, mean, don't we need Don't them, do body fluids. No. Yeah, that's such a calling, you know, for and folks. And grateful for nurses and doctors. Absolutely. I also hear... People tell me teachers. Oh, <laughs> you know, yes. We love our teachers. Yes. But, mm -mm. yeah. So, finally, what do you want to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you were here with us, Della. Thank you so much. Thank you. I uh, yeah, I've it. learned a lot and been introduced to some brand new plants. And uh, yeah, this plant sale is going to be fabulous. I know. I, I hope so. Y'all are going to do well with it, and folks are going to enjoy the plants they have that uh, they'll be getting to sh be shared. And it, it is our only fundraiser that we do. Mm -hmm. we, we And we fund all of our school projects. It reminded me when you said teacher, we have several school gardens that we do. Yes, and I think that's great for kids to learn that, you know, you don't go to HEB to get the vegetables. It, it I mean, is they amazing. actually grow. It is amazing. that It they, opens their eyes. And they love gardening. They the kids do. are so enthusiastic. So we have, I don't know, seven schools maybe? Yeah. I don't know. We have a list of, of schools that we do and um, assisted living. I know you work at the Carlene Bright Arboretum. Uh, we used to before the construction. Well, I know it's a mess now. Oh, yeah, you it's a mess now. Get in there. We had two gardens over there. Uh, we do um, the schools and uh, Braz. Uh, Bra oh, what is it? Belt. 
We do Bell's Hill. I know Bell's Hill's got we a do Bell's Hill. A, There's a, big a garden children's program. garden over there. And um, the assisted living, I just add a brain fade. And of, I think that's that's great, too, for uh, the elderly who... Oh, it's great you know, therapy to have for maybe them. raised beds and we, a way for them... They have raised beds and, to you know, around and do what they used access to do. and... They can just, you know, roll Weave right on up there, and, and, and they love the gardening. Yeah. They love it. Well, gardening is a great, great pastime, and I'm. it's important. It's needed, and yes. it will do, do you good. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. And join us again next time. Bye-bye. Central Texas Life with Ann Harder is part of the Rogue Media family. Be sure to check out our other shows at roguemedianetwork.com. Please rate this show five stars on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or anywhere you get your podcasts. Join us again soon for more Central Texas Life with Ann Harder.